This video was sponsored by EcoFlow. Pretty ugly, huh? This is my router table in all its glory. It's a Woodpeckers brand router table. I've had it for a couple years now. I put it together and I just have let it sit and shoved stuff any which way. There's not even shelves in here. This is a horrible storage system. So today is the day. I'm finally gonna do something about this. I'm gonna pull all this out, clean this up, and I'm gonna try and do some sort of storage compartments in here. I love this kind of project because I have absolutely no plans. I'm just gonna start going and see what happens and bring you guys along for the ride. So let's jump in here. Oh, and um, you might wanna subscribe down there. Just go ahead and do it now, get it out of the way. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Well, maybe you will. I don't know you. You could absolutely hate this channel and I don't blame you. Sometimes I can be annoying and I talk too much, but that's neither here or there. All right, let's get to the project. But you know, I only talk too much because I have to explain a lot of stuff, so. All right, just go subscribe. Now, I'm not proud to admit it. I did let this little corner of my shop get away from me. Normally, I'm a pretty organized person, but regardless of how it happened, it happened. So first thing I had to do was just get this whole thing cleaned out and at least see what I'm working with. I did find these sweet piano dolly things under there. Wee! Woo! But, come on, Jason, stay focused. We're trying to upgrade a router table here, not play on piano dollies. After getting the router table all cleaned off and exposed, I just cleaned off the excess dust with a broom and sprayed the whole thing down with my air compressor. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. It's not like you need to know how I cleaned it off. I'm sure you're very capable of cleaning off a router table. Once it was clean, the first thing I needed to do was take some measurements for these two lower levels. Now, thankfully, they already have this nice lip on them, which will be perfect to cut some plywood and just insert a few shelves. I decided getting the shelves in there would be the first step, and then I can just kind of build out from there once I have a solid substrate. So I grabbed a sheet of 3 quarter inch birch ply, and I started ripping it down to the correct size over on the table saw. I figure I can do this entire build out of one sheet of 3 quarter inch birch ply. At least, that's my plan. We'll see how it works out. Now because I'm lazy and I didn't want to get out the track saw, I just cut down the pieces to length over on the miter saw, cutting halfway through on one side and then flipping it around to complete my cut. This isn't the most accurate way to make cuts, but it's just a thrown together router table upgrade, so get off my back. Now, I was a little concerned about getting these shelves in place. I was really hoping I wasn't gonna have to take the whole table cart thing apart to get them in. The first one slid in no problem. I had lots of room to work with. The lower shelf, on the other hand, was a bit of a pain. It was so close to fitting. I mean, really close. Close enough that I just decided to get a hammer and whack the crap out of it until it popped in there. Yes, I'm dinging up the plywood a little bit, but I don't think you're gonna see that back corner once it's all built out, and hey, I didn't have to take the whole table apart, so it's a win. This is when I realized a huge mistake. See, I brought the shelf all the way out which means that once I put sides in there, you're gonna see that exposed plywood. And even though this is just a, you know, little shop upgrade, I wanted to make it look nice at least. So I decided to fix that mistake. And yes, this meant wiggling that lower shelf back out after I already hammered it in. So I took both sheets back out and I decided to remove three quarters of an inch on either end, or an inch and a half in total. Now, I don't trust that any plywood is exactly three quarters of an inch, so instead of measuring an inch and a half to cut off, I just measured right off of my sheet of plywood, and I'll make my cut appropriate for that length, whatever it may be. So I measured the top shelf, measured the bottom shelf, and I cut that dimension off of the end of both of my shelf pieces. 
You see, I should have done this to begin with because now that bottom shelf slides right into place, no problem. It was fun to hit it with a hammer though. Sometimes you just gotta find ways to relieve your aggressions. So with both of my shelves now in place, it was time to make some sides to box it all in. So I cut the sides to the right length. Now I'm gonna show you here, this is what it would have looked like if I hadn't fixed my little mistake, exposed plywood on the bottom. But since I cut those shelves shorter, now I can stick the sides in and cover that up and I have a nice clean piece of plywood to make my router table cabinet thingy and what's it. So after putting both my side pieces in on the top, I cut some more pieces and I slip those in on the bottom. Now my shelf piece is nice and tight between those two side pieces so it kind of gets wedged in place. I'm hoping that's enough to just secure it on here and I won't actually have to hook it in at all. But the sides, not so much. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to hold those nice and secure. Probably wondering how I'm gonna do that. Well, so am I. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. All I do know is that I really, really like this router table. All right, that's enough of that. All right, here's attempt number one at attaching my sides to the table itself. I got some of these self-tapping little metal screws. I thought that I could just forego pre-drilling, use these self-tapping screws, and drill directly through that steel table, and it would be super easy. So I gave it a try. As you can see, I am making it through the table without pre-drilling, it's getting in there. But the problem is, it took a long flip in time and I really had to push hard and I didn't like how big of a hole it put into the plywood itself. So after doing it with one screw, I switched to pre-drilling through the metal and then just attaching it with some little three-quarter inch black screws that blended nicely with the cabinet itself. So I attached all my side panels. Now the bottom side panels, fortunately, there was already these pre-drilled holes in the frame, so I just went right through those and everything was nice and secure. We're getting somewhere. It's starting to look like a cleaned up router table. As you can see, my shelves are wedged in nice and tight between those two outside pieces, so I'm not even gonna bother hooking them down to the table itself. Now to cut all my internal divider pieces and start making some compartments that we can shove some shelves into. So I measured the top and bottom dimensions and I cut some more pieces of plywood to slide in and use as my divider pieces. My overall thought for layout is gonna be two drawers on either side of the router on the top and then two bigger drawers on the bottom. So as you can see with my dividers in place, those are the holes I made in the cabinet. Now to figure out how to attach these dividers inside the cabinet. I figure the easiest thing to do would be to just drill some pocket holes in the bottom of each divider piece and screw it right to my wood shelf. I can do that on the top and bottom for the bottom divider because I can screw into the lower shelf and the upper shelf on the top. So I found the perfect center of my lower little compartment marked it with a tape measure, and I screwed that divider in with those pocket holes. Now the upper dividers were a little trickier because yes, I can use the pocket holes to go right into that lower shelf, but I had to figure out a way to attach it on the top underside of the table itself. Luckily for me, there were these nice little metal tabs that hung down as a support system for the top. So I figured I could drill directly through those and just attach it with those pocket holes on the bottom and everything would be nice and secure. So I did just that. I drilled some holes through that support brace piece right into the piece of plywood and I sank in a couple screws until now my top and bottom dividers were securely fastened to my plywood shelf. Now, I'm putting a bunch of drawers in here, and the last thing I want is for those drawers to be filled with all the dust that the router table is going to cause. So I decided to figure out a way to close the compartments on the back side to keep the dust out and keep the contents of the drawers nice and clean and organized. But first, I needed a few nailer strips that I could nail a plywood backer onto. 
Now I can use those dividers, but there's nothing to nail to on the top or bottom of those pieces. So I just cut some scrap pieces of plywood, drilled some pocket holes, plopped them in place, and boom, I had myself some nailer strips. Speaking of nailers, I grabbed a, well, actually this is a pneumatic stapler because I thought it'd hold that quarter inch plywood better. I cut some pieces of quarter inch ply, plopped them on the back, and I was ready to start working on drawer slides. You might be wondering why did I leave that middle compartment open? Well, that's because I want to be able to access that to clean all the dust out from the back and the front. And who knows, maybe I'll add some special dust extraction thing on the back at some point. This video was sponsored by EcoFlow. EcoFlow is a leading energy company that has developed portable, renewable power stations to keep you going, whether outdoors, at work, or at home. I just got their newest unit, the Delta Mini. It's super powerful with the ability to power 90% of essential devices, up to 1800 watts, like a dishwasher, microwave, vacuum, even a toaster. I mean, really, who doesn't want to make toast in the great outdoors? Their X-Stream technology makes it possible to fast recharge at a maximum 900 watts through AC outlets to get 0 to 80% charge in just an hour and full charge in just 1.6 hours. And one of the things I love about this unit is that if you leave something charging and you want to check on the life of the unit itself, well, there's an app for that. You just pull up the app on your phone and it tells you exactly what the output is and how much power you have left in your EcoFlow unit. With my job, I spend a lot of time on my computer, editing videos, and designing new products. So it's really nice that I don't have to do that at home anymore. I can just find a picnic table in the middle of the woods and get stuff done. The newest member of the Delta family, the Delta Mini, is a great addition to your toolkit when you need a smaller power source. Head to my link in the description to check it out. Anyways, with that all complete, I started figuring out my drawer slides themselves. Now I had to bring out the side wall so that the drawer slide would sit flush with that front metal support brace thing. So I just cut another piece of scrap 3 quarter inch ply and I screwed it in place. Now I made this the exact height that I want my second level of drawer slide so that it'll be super easy to line my drawer slide up just with the top of that scrap piece. And what you do to one side, well, you should probably do the same thing to the other side. So cutting another piece of scrap 3 quarter inch ply the exact same dimension, I screwed it in place over on the other side. And then I grabbed about $600 worth of Blum undermount drawer slides and I started plopping them into their correct location. Two drawers on the bottom and four drawers up top. These are super easy to install. You can screw them straight to the bottom or straight to your side divider. I got these ones at rockler.com. I will put a link in the video description. That's about all I have to say about that. Oh, well, I guess one more thing I should mention is that whenever I do these undermount drawer slides, I always install the drawer slides first before I build my drawer boxes. The reason being is that way I can pull out the drawer slides, take the dimensions of the drawer box right off the slides themselves, and I know every single drawer is going to fit perfect that way. If I didn't do it that way, I'd have to do a bunch of math beforehand and get it all figured out, and then it's kind of a guessing game, and I'm not that smart. So as you can see here, all I do is pull out the drawer slides, I take my measurement for my width of the drawer right off of those slides, and I already know the length is going to be whatever size drawer slide I'm using. For this project, I'm using 18 inch drawer slides. So they're going to be 18 inches deep by whatever dimension I just took off of the slides themselves. Now to build these drawer boxes, I'm just going quick and easy using some, yep, birch plywood. No, I wasn't able to build these out of that three quarter inch birch because for the undermount drawer slides, the thickest you can use is five eighths. Luckily, I had some scrap five eighths laying around my shop and it was the perfect size to mill down into drawer box parts. So after cutting all my pieces to length, I added a quarter inch dado to hold my bottom panel. And then on half of my pieces, I cut out a little notch for the drawer slide to fit underneath. 
If you want a more detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough of how I build these drawer boxes, there is a whole tutorial in my cabinet making series. I will link that video up at the top of your screen right now. So you could either pause and go watch it or just remember and then when this video is over then you can go watch it. No need to bail right now in the middle of this video. Things are just starting to get good. I'm about to build some drawer boxes. Now I had to build six drawer boxes in total and I'm not lying when I say that it took me less than 30 minutes to build all six of these because this is the quickest way that you can make drawer boxes. There are five piece boxes. You get your bottom panel, your front and your back piece, and your two side pieces. I just glue them together and tack them in place with some 16 gauge brad nails. It might seem too easy to be true, but I have been building drawers this way for years and they are incredibly strong. I actually use the same method to build all the drawer boxes for my kitchen and they are standing up great. So don't overthink it. You could do dovetails or box joints or something fancy, but let me tell you a little secret. Nobody really cares what the flippin' drawer box looks like. Just get it done and move on. So I built two, three, four, five, and then I built my sixth one. Darn it, I thought I was going to have a little cool fade to my sixth one. I kind of got messed up. With all my drawer boxes put together, I just needed to install these little orange clippy things that come with the Blum undermount drawer slides. This allows the slide to actually lock into the drawer itself. You just hold each one in place with two screws and those are ready to go. Now the slides clip into those orange clips on the front and then there's a little metal tab on the back. So you have to drill out a hole for that tab. I find out where this tab needs to go just by sticking the drawer in place and bumping it a couple times against those tabs. The tabs leave a nice little indentation and you just drill right where those indentations are. They do make fancy jigs that you can stick on the back and line it up and drill, but that just seems like a waste of time when you can just kind of bang the drawer in place and know exactly where you need to drill every single time. So after doing one drawer, I did another drawer and another drawer. I think you can see where this is going. Pretty soon I had all six drawers installed and it was time to start working on our drawer faces. Now I know this is just a simple cabinet for my shop, but I can't leave well enough alone. I figured if I'm gonna do these drawer faces out of plywood, I might as well make them all grain matched, right? So instead of just cutting a bunch of random pieces and throwing them over drawers, I cut one big panel and my plan was to cut all of my drawer faces out of this one panel, keeping in mind that I wanted them all oriented so that the grain would perfectly match when I was done. Is anybody but me ever going to notice this? Well, no, but at least I'll know the grain matches and that makes me happy. So just, just let me have this one. Now, I still have that big middle compartment with no drawers. I'm going to figure out some sort of door or latch system, something so that I can access that if I ever need to get to the router, but it's not actually going to be a functional drawer or anything. So after getting all my pieces cut, I lined them up and then I had to figure out a way to hook them to my actual drawer box. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this, I just wanted to get it done. So I just grabbed some CA glue and some accelerator spray. I didn't even use spacers or anything like that to make sure my reveals are perfect. My plan was just to completely eyeball this and hope for the best. Now before you freak out, no, I'm not just using CA glue. The CA glue is just to hold the drawer face in place to get them all lined up. And then I'm going to be installing drawer poles on these. That's going to be two screws through the drawer pole and those will be plenty to hold the face nice and secure. The CA glue is just a temporary solution to get all the drawer faces where I want them. So I started squeezing glue and spraying accelerator spray and before long, all the drawer faces were um, all the drawer faces were in place and ready for hardware. 
Now you might think hardware is just an afterthought thing and it's not really that important what you pick or don't pick, but actually it is. I've learned from experience that when picking hardware for a cabinet that you're gonna be standing close to, you wanna make sure to pick something out that doesn't have any tabs or hooks that can get caught on your pants. Ain't nobody want nothing pulling on your pants. So I just picked out these really simple black handle looking things. There's nothing to get caught on my pants and oh, Looks like my son came out and decided to start playing with the camera while I was installing these. He's such a weirdo, but at least he gives me good hugs to make up for the shoddy camera work. After he left, I got my last drawer pull installed, and now I had to figure out this whole center panel thing. Now it was a little too skinny and tight to fit any sort of cabinet hinges on there, and I didn't really want to put another pole. I thought that would just look a little too busy. So I had to figure out another way to attach this without using hinges or any sort of latch system. So this is what I came up with. The first thing I did was cut some little pieces that I could install as kind of a lip. Then I took them over to the drill press and I drilled out some countersunk holes on each end of those little lip pieces. And I figured I'd make it so the whole panel would just clip in with magnets. I got the bigger magnets in the lip pieces, some rare earth magnets that I'll insert into the panel itself, and I drilled some holes to attach these little lip things inside the cabinet. So before I did that, I just squeezed, yes, some more CA glue and accelerator spray to hold them in place. And once they were stuck nice and secure, I just anchored them in with a few GRK wood screws till they were nice and sturdy. Then I countersunk some more holes in the back of my panel and I glued in those rare earth magnets. And what is quickly becoming a sponsored video for CA glue, I also glued in the corresponding magnets onto my pre-drilled lip pieces. Making sure all the magnets were oriented the correct way so that they would actually suck that panel in and not repel it. That wouldn't make any sense. And then I clipped the panel on to see how it looked. I liked it, but I thought it looked just a little plain. And that's when I remembered, hey, I also own a screen printing studio. You know, I actually print all my own apparel. So anytime you order a t-shirt on my website, yeah, yours truly is the one printing it by hand. So I grabbed this screen for a new logo I've been working on and I figured I'd just print that logo right onto this piece of plywood and class this whole thing up a bit. I went with this sagey green color because it was already mixed up on hand and I'm incredibly lazy. And with a few swipes of the squeegee, swoop, 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 I now had a fresh new logo on that front panel and it was looking pretty fly. Then while I waited for that to dry, I bought this little on off switch for a router table on Amazon. I'll include a link in the video description if you want one of these for yourself. It's just going to make it way easier to turn the router on and off without having to reach up inside the table and actually turn it on on the router. So I drilled a hole in the side of the cabinet, I screwed the switch on, and I just started threading all my cords through the cabinet box to make it look crispy and clean. Then to organize those cords inside the cabinet, I just got some of these zip ties with this little screw mount thing on the top of them. And I zip tied all my cords up and just attached them to the side and back of the cabinet, making sure they would not be in the way of the drawers. Don't want anything impeding those drawers moving in and out. Am I right? Ah, perfect. Nothing's getting in the way. And with that, my whole router table storage upgrade, rebuild, redo system thingamawatsit was pretty much complete. All I had to do was wheel it back into place, reattach it to the dust extraction system, double check and make sure my switch was working correctly, which it was, nice and convenient, and then of course reattach that front panel with my fresh new screen printed logo. And if I do say so myself, this thing is looking much better than it did when we started. 
I've got plenty of storage in here for all my bits and bobs and router table components. And I've got easy access to the router through that magnetic front panel should I ever need it. Now I just gotta figure out what the heck I'm gonna put in all these drawers. In case you don't remember what we started with, here you go. Ugly, gross router table and nice, new, clean, well-organized router table. Well, not bad for a day's work, right? I mean, this is way better than what I had before. I got all sorts of crazy storage. I added that nice switch on the side so I don't have to reach under there and turn my router on anymore. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I know this is a pretty simple one, but it's something that I feel like anybody with a router table could easily upgrade theirs in a similar way. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Patreon link is in the video description along with any of the stuff that you saw me use in this video. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great day. I'm gonna go finish this beer.